I'm just going to start um, by playing a video that was made by Paul Stallard as part of the project that's um, integral to the service development and leadership strand. And the project um, was entitled Case Management, Routine Outcome Monitoring and Supervision, an Integrated Approach. And he was just there to claim the credit for it. And um, the video summarizes the concerns that there are on the ground by clinicians about routine outcome monitoring and caseload management. Paul said, it felt as if we were facing a wall of resistance, and that should help explain the video. All I had was just a brick in the wall. All in all it was, all just bricks in the wall. I never thought I'd be following and supporting Pink Floyd. <laughs> Just to make it more anxiety provoking than it already was. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm here today. Um, to talk on behalf of the three collaboratives um, and to talk about to talk briefly about what's been happening happening at a service level and also to provide some practical examples of how service transformation has happened in practice and, and at service level several people today have already spoke about the impact that CYP I have just having particularly phase one, and it really has been a whirlwind. Um, it really is important, I think, and people have said to, to, to stand back and stay, take stock, that this has only been going on 12 months. The distance that people have traveled within that time, between last June, um, when me and Deb and others sat up for hours and hours writing bids to where we are now, is just absolutely tremendous. I'm sorry. Some people are saying, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's upside down. Right. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, the training and evidence-based therapy is supported by service lead training and supervising training. And me absolutely recognises that the training being provided and the potential impact is wider than the individuals that are actually on the course, if, if, that, make, if that makes sense. So one of the things that we've heard about is the challenges, and there are significant challenges in the implementation of CYPI Act, and it hasn't been easy going over the last 12 months. What we've seen, though, over the last 12 months is the development of uh, a number of really strong collaboratives, three in number, 
who are here today, and there's more going to join it. But also the development of people coming together who ordinarily would, would never come together or would see no value in coming together. Uh, but these, these services have come together to talk about IAPT. And what's oiled the wheels of communication has been, in some cases, money. And money is, is important. It's not everything. But it has, it has oiled the wheels of some really important conversations and some really important um, <laughs> relationships. Have we said this is about service transformation? I think that's a, that's a message that you, if, if you don't go away with anything, you'll go away with CYPI. It's about service transformation. And it's bringing together a number of policy strands, um, participation, access and acceptability, outcome measures, training and evidence-based practice. You can now begin to prove we do a good job rather than just saying we do a good job. That was one of the key issues that I had in terms of service management. I was constantly able to say, I'm doing a really good job, and my team are doing a really good job. And then people were saying to me, show me the evidence. And this is really going to be uh, an opportunity to, give it, to show that evidence. CYPI Apt recognises that training is absolutely essential, but it also acknowledges that service transformation happens from within. The training for, uh, for, the training for evidence-based therapists, supervisors, and service leads provides strength in numbers to support service transformation. And we've got examples within, within the collaboratives where particularly Reading and Oxford have opened their service, um, service leadership programme to a wider to a, to a wider group of people. And it's not just one, per, one or two people, persons, going into organisations trying to affect change. This is strength in numbers. This is a number of people going into the organisation, having lots of conversations at different levels with lots of people. And there are lots of examples within the collaboratives of how key messages are being communicated within services and within teams within services. We've heard a lot about um, the, the, the implementation of routine outcome measures, and, and it is a key challenge. Um, we're asking families, children, young persons, and families, and the workforce to complete scales and measures and questionnaires. So with this in mind, I thought we could look at service transformation using two of the scales you're, uh, I'm sure you are familiar with, and if you're not familiar with, um, you're going to be familiar with in the not-too-distant future. And all of this happening within the context of possibly significant pathology within CAM services. I'm still trying to formulate myself sort of um, where things are up to at the moment within CAMS. Um, but I think it's fair to say that some services are feeling a bit down, a bit depressed um, at the moment. Constant pressure to deliver, more deadlines, reduced resources, and just another one of those initiatives to implement. What I'd like to say that is that the workforce is so important. It really is important. We know the correlation between the successful implementation of projects and the well-being of staff. More importantly, we know the correlation between staff well-being and patient outcomes. We know that. There's, there's lots of information out there. Workforce are your biggest asset. Sometimes they're the biggest problem but they are your biggest asset. And there are some great examples within the collaboratives on the work that is being done, being done to engage the workforce. And there's one message that I can put to you today that has been, uh, I think, reinforced in this morning and this afternoon's um, discussions is about communication and the absolute need to communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. That's the, that would be the message. Some services are, are finding themselves sort of easily distractless, distracted, restless, and finding it difficult to concentrate. Some services are actually suggesting there's a constant change and up, upheaval, and they're not actually being allowed to see things through. That there's a constant sort of flux and change. I wonder how that is for you. Is it true? Somewhat true? Certainly true. 
what we've what we've been finding with it within within the collaboratives is that CY, CYPI is supporting a more focused approach where communication is key. Partnerships are being developed, existing ones are strengthened. We've seen development of briefing notes, newsletters, team service visits, whole day launch events, question and answer workshops, examples of partnerships predicting potential issues and actually addressing them at source before they come in, before they come an issue. Some services are feeling scared, concerned about what they've signed up to. The sheer size of this task and the time scale that was that, that was um, that we ha we had to do these things, and, and that's with everything else going on. What we what we are seeing now is an emerging of a clarity of roles and responsibilities and expectations. There are examples across the collaboratives of strategies being implemented to support people to do the job they're employed to do, and what is expected of them. Across the three collaboratives, there are examples of whole service implementation of capacity and demand models to support capacity building. And we have seen in a number of the collaboratives the development of job planning. So sitting down with clinicians or therapists and actually planning the job. There's been some resistance. It really has been a difficult project, and, and, and CYPI after has not been without its challenges. And I expect there are an awful lot more uh, challenges to come. However, without, without exception, and in terms of the collaboratives and, and the people we visit, I'm now seeing a grown commitment to the key elements of CYPI after and a recognition of the, actually the key elements is what we should be doing anyway, and I guess what you're already doing. There are conversations happening across organisations from service level to the boardroom. There are examples of performance management and support stru structures being put in place. I was in a meeting with, with, with Jill last week where we were talking about a review of service level agreements and, and the rewriting of service, service specifications. There's also sometimes sort of, um, and this is understandable concerns about the pace of change and everything's happening too quickly. And there are views that things need to stay the way they are. And if we change them, it's sort of bad things will happen. Well, there is a recognition that the, the, there is a need to support through this transition period. Uh, there is a significant transition happening and support is required. I've heard both students and staff talk about how CYPI Act will empower them. They, they, they've started to talk about autonomy. And of course, with empowerment and autonomy comes that accountability as well. IT governance has been so eloquently spoke about before me by Deb. So it is a challenge, and, and, and Deb has spoke about that. But the solutions are being found. People are actually sort of seeing the challenges and, and, and finding solutions to it. In Salford, we've seen whole service reviews um, we've seen audit, skills audits, sort of linked to what Anne was talking about, um, skill mix audits. We've, we've got them. We've got the tools. The tools are there for you to use. Your self-assessments. We've got workforce plans. Every, everything we talk about is there for you to use. And our new collaboratives coming on, on board will hopefully sort of um, take advantage of them. There's been some suggestions that CAMs are, are sometimes picked on. <laughs> they have problems with their peers. And they s often see themselves as scapegoated uh, and as a result can often become solitary and prefer to do things on their own. Well, CYP Act is supporting whole, serv whole systems changed. We're working together. It is absolutely essential. It's not going to work if we don't work together. There's, again, there's many examples across the collaboratives of this happening developing and building on new relationships, improved team working, improved supervision, and, and, and just, in, just improved sort of the well-being of, of the workforce. New partnerships both within statutory and third sector organisations are happening. And of course, partnerships with children, young people and families is happening. And CYPI Act is a conversation wherever you go at the moment. 
CAMS is pro-social. We're, we're doing quite well on our pro-social scale, I think, CAMS. Um, we are considerate, and, and we, we do try and help, help when we can. And from a standing start 12 months ago, uh, again, I, I, I'll say it again, it's just absolutely amazing where we are now. There's an emerging clarity of what CAMS is about. Examples and sharing information and experience across the collaboratives happens on a daily basis. We've seen HR systems, we've seen HR systems respond flexibly. <laughs> I didn't think, I thought it was a pre-requirement of a HR to be non-flexible, but we've actually seen HR systems flex in terms of backfill. It's just fantastic, some of the things that have happened. We've seen shadowing, mentoring taking place, show and tell ways of working. Um, I, I was in a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago where a clinician um, spoke to someone who's doing um, clinical outcomes on a daily basis, saying, can I come and sit with you and do a clinical case with you? To actually show how the implementation of outcome measures happens in practice. So, uh, just some, some fantastic work. There's admin reviews, frequently asked questions, and a growing toolbox, and that community of CAMs really developing. Some of the projects underway, self-referral systems, what, how, pilots, review, feedback, and the rollout of this. We've, talk, we've, we, we've mentioned this. The participation, and, and our young people aren't here. They're probably in a cafe in London somewhere, sort of drinking coffees, probably. I don't know. Um, <laughs> routine outcome measures we, we've, we've talked about. New roles, the emerging of new roles, but also existing roles being enhanced. Education and training based on a thorough analysis of need and linked to skill mix. Again, these are things we have here. We have skill mix tools for you to use. Education and training, extending the thought about the people actually who are going on a train, to think of a whole systems, to think about the whole workforce and the education and training needs of the whole workforce. And a whole, we've seen a whole system implementation of, of the CAPA model happen. Again, just within this, within 12 months. Some of the comments that I've, I've, uh, I've picked up um, over, over the last couple of weeks, really, to support sort of what we were doing today. Um, a CBT trainee, CYP IAPT is a fantastic opportunity, and this will really focus what we do, and we'll be able to provide better services for children and young people. HEI lecture, it's a tremendous opportunity for organisations to come together to do something right. Far too long we've been working in isolation. Commissioner, commissioner. I enjoy working on a project which allows flexibility within a framework and a steer from the centre. CAMS manager, I've become a much better communicator, predicting potential problems and being open to the frustrations and concern of others. So actually being open to some of the problems and understanding that there are going to be some problems, but working with them problems. Another CAMS manager, this is great. We are working better together and having conversations with people I've never spoke to before. Some of them are actually in the office next door. <laughs> Senior clinician, supervision is the key to success for service transformation, CYP. I have to recognise this. I absolutely, I agree with that. Next one, from a CYP IAPT manager. I truly believe in CYP IAPT. Mistake, and becoming adept at promoting positives in what are perceived negative solutions. That's a great one. I think I'm just about to run out of time. Um, my brief was to very briefly represent the three collaboratives in providing some examples of service transformation and practice, and, and, I, and I hope I've been able to do that in, in, in a short time. I guess um, a fitting comment um, to finish on um, from an SHA representative. And he said to me, some projects are a pleasure to be involved in. CYP is a privilege. <laughs>